Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. This is like four on the trot or something. Uh, I'm on a roll. So I thought I'd uh, make another video uh, to follow up with uh, some of the changes that I tend to make after I've done an Ubuntu install. So this is a follow up to uh, the video that I did yesterday, uh, which was called Nuke and Pay a Fresh Start, where I basically formatted my machine and but uh, a clean install of Ubuntu Focal Fossa, uh, which will eventually become Ubuntu 2004 in April. Um, and that was a follow up to uh, a video I did where I showed what my desktop looks like uh, at the current time. Now, that video was recorded uh, just a few days ago, like last week. And this video shows what it looked like before I formatted the drive and started all over again so you know the sequence of them was i was running 2004 that i'd upgraded and had for a, a while wiped it and uh, now i've got a, a clean install and so today what i wanted to do is talk about those kind of you know those articles you see which are you know top 10 things to do after you install ubuntu or here are five applications you absolutely need well it's totally not that it's just what i've done on my system and I've had some feedback from people where they've said they've learned stuff from these. Maybe they've discovered a GNOME extension or a command line tool or a package or whatever. I thought I'd go through them, the ones that I've installed, and maybe you'll learn something. Maybe not, but maybe you'll have ideas for how I can improve things. And you could let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see more of these, then do subscribe to the channel. I'm very fortunate that... One and a half thousand people have decided to follow my nonsense. Thank you very much, everyone. So I've made a, a GitHub gist. Are these gists or gists? I never know if that's a hard G or a soft G, like uh, GIF or GIF. It doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, uh, in the video yesterday, I installed Ubuntu on this laptop. So again, it's my ThinkPad T450. It's uh, my workhorse, the machine I use all day, every day. And these are the things I did immediately after the install, the clean install of Ubuntu. So unsurprisingly, I installed a bunch of software. And the things I installed, um, I didn't do them all in one go. I'm not the kind of person who has one of those fresh install scripts that they run that sets the whole machine up because there's no point because I only ever install once every couple of years. Remember, I wiped this machine which was clean installed two years ago. There's no point in me having a post install script because I'm never going to run it. Um, but what I also want to do is only add the things as I need them. And so uh, some people might find that frustrating. You know, you go to do something, you find the commands not there or the applications not there. Oh, you've got to go and install it. But I've got a decently fast internet connection. It doesn't take long to install stuff. So it's not that much of a drama to install stuff ad hoc as I need them. So that's what I've done. But these are the things I've uh, installed so far, a bunch of snaps. Uh, you can see which snaps I've got if I just open a terminal and um, just do snap list. Yeah, you can see, well, make that a bit smaller and then wider. There you go. So you can see these mostly match what's in that list there. There's a little bit of difference. I missed off matter most. Um, but yeah, that's about all of them, I think. Um, so yeah. I use Sublime Text as my preferred text editor, so it's pinned to the side here. I actually even paid for it. Uh, I use Sublime Merge uh, because I hate Git and I much prefer using a graphical tool. I'm not a developer, <laughs> despite this being on GitHub. Um, Snapcraft is a tool I use all day every day to make snaps, and so it makes sense for me to install that, and that's available as a snap. Uh, Multipass is a tool that lets you uh, spin up uh, VMs. Uh, of Ubuntu and so I can uh, use this in order to have clean environments um, it's a bit like using something like VirtualBox but it's pretty fast and lightweight and you can operate it completely from the command line as you can see in this little video demo so I use multipass and snapcraft integrates with multipass so it makes sense for me to use that to get clean build environments uh, sync thing I also installed because I synchronize all my files between my systems using sync thing. I love sync thing. It's uh, better than Dropbox. You should switch from Dropbox to sync thing. Uh, 
Slack. Now, I'm torn on this one. I sit in a whole bunch of developer Slacks, and I installed the Slack client, which is a big, fat Electron app. I'm thinking of removing it again because I discovered that the config... Whoops, I pressed the button wrong there. Uh, the config for this is ginormous, and I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that's cache stuff, but I'm kind of thinking I'll just use Slack in a browser tab instead of um, using the fat app. So I'm, I think I might strike that one from the list. Caprine is a Facebook messenger. I don't care if you don't use Facebook. I do, to speak to some of my relatives, keep in contact with family. And Caprine is a nice way to use Facebook Messenger contained in a window and it has some controls over it so you can say can people see whether I've read their messages or not or can they see if I'm online or not you can control that kind of stuff which is kind of nice um, so Caprine is nice I like that it's, and, and you can close it and obviously Facebook chat goes away uh, Discord, obviously more chatting going on there. Library is the uh, video sharing platform that's built on blockchain nonsense and internet magic coins. Uh, I package this up as a snap and I use it, so uh, I installed it. Uh, NC Spot, you may have seen this, it popped up on uh, OMG Ubuntu. It's a Spotify client, uh, so I use that to listen to music because it's lighter weight than um, than using a, a desktop app. Uh, so those are all the snaps I've got so far. On my previous install, I had over 300 snaps installed, and a lot of that was because I was testing things, or I had half-finished, half-built snaps that you know I, I was working on, but they weren't fully working yet. So mm, I, I expect this this set to climb, but that's like my minimum viable set of snaps to get me working. I also installed some stuff uh, from the Debian archive, apt archive, open SSH server so that I can SSH into this laptop remotely. Mosh is really helpful if you've got a, a ropey wireless uh, connection or if you transition from wired to wireless a lot, which I do when I undock my laptop from the docking station. So you can mosh and then a machine, and then if the network disconnects or is, is a bit ropey, mosh will try and keep that connection alive. It's really good. Uh, NCEDU is really useful. Um, you can just go NCDU like that, and it will count up all the stuff in your home directory, and you know, or you can point it at a particular directory, um, and you can then drill down on these directories and then delete stuff. You know, manage your disk space. NCDU is a super useful utility. Image Magic, because it has a convert command, and I often use that to scale photos down uh, for things like Twitter. Um, I sometimes take photos with my phone and then the picture's too big, so I just do convert minus scale 50% or 33% or something, or change the resolution or something like that. So Image Magic is a big fat complicated application set of tools but the one i use is convert um the next one is chrome gnome shell which enables me to install extensions from the gnome extensions website um you have to install uh, this extension to your browser and then also there's a package you need to install but it tells you what to do when you go here so i just did what it said and that was a package i had to install Gnome Tweaks is uh, this thing. So it enables you to make changes to the look and feel and behavior of uh, Gnome Desktop. I'll come back to this. Um, and that's everything that I did from Snaps and App. There might be a few other things, but those are like my minimum things. Uh, I called this section off piste because these are things that are not available as Snaps or Debs in the archive, but I installed them anyway. Uh, this sound switcher indicator um, is super useful. I love this. And it's this thing up here. It doesn't look particularly interesting right now because there's not a lot of audio inputs and outputs. But when my laptop's in the docking station, this list is much greater. And for some reason, whatever reason, Pulse Audio never seems to choose the right input and output. And so this allows me to just click that button and then choose the right input and output. And then I'm I'm done. That happens a lot on things like Hangouts, where I have headphones, Bluetooth headphones maybe, and I want to switch to a different set of headphones or something. It's it's very useful. The downside is, and the reason why I said off-piste, is this is available in a PPA, 
and it tells you how to get it in the PPA. But unfortunately, I'm on Focal, uh, which will become 2004, and the PPA is only currently built up until Eon. However, you can view the individual packages uh, published for Eon, and it is possible to just yoink that deb and install it on Focal, which is what I did. So my system, I actually have um, this deb installed on it, despite that being built for Eon, but it does work. Your mileage may vary, etc. The other off-piste thing I have is Google Chrome. Uh, so I actually use Firefox as my main browser, uh, but I really only use Chrome for things like I do... I watch YouTube videos in Chrome and Hangouts I have in Chrome. So there's very little I use Chrome for. Oh, the other thing I, the thing I really like doing with Chrome is you can create web apps for uh, websites you go to. So for example, um, you can go, if you, if you use YouTube all the time, then rather than have a tab, you could go up here to the menu in Chrome, go down to more tools, and then hit create shortcut and then say open as window and hit create and now it breaks that out into its own alt tabable thing so i've now got youtube in an alt tabable window and i can minimize it and i can pin it to here and that's what i did with for example tweetdeck so if i open tweetdeck i hope there's nothing offensive on twitter right now but this is actually chrome with tweetdeck in it which is the twitter client that i tend to use right so it's quite handy because again it lets you alt tab between things and I can switch to Twitter and if I want Twitter to go away I just close that window and it's gone. Uh, so I quite like that um, and I use that for both Twitter and for the lounge which is my IRC client which is this icon over here. I'm not going to open that. Um, but yeah it's just a browser window. That's pretty cool. Now enabling backups. My backups are done by um, a separate server that I have on my network, and I use a tool called R Snapshot. Uh, this thing, which is awesome, uh, it uses R Sync, so I have it configured to back up four times a day uh, all my machines, and so that server, like over SSH, connects to each of my machines in turn and backs them all up, and so I have a a central backup of everything and that's how I was okay formatting this laptop is because I know my server has a backup going back probably a couple of years it it, it, um, it does deltas each day and then the the amount that it keeps falls off over time so after a week you you lose some and after a month you lose some and so on but it's it's super awesome I love our snapshot and that's the backup tool and I had to add the laptop in because this is effectively a new laptop that I've added into my backup system. And as soon as I did that, I realized the host name I chose yesterday in a hurry, which if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know I chose the host name Shirker um, because I didn't have my list of computers from science fiction open. And uh, I called, called the machine Shirker after the computer in Ulysses 31. Well, that was stupid because there is already a Shirker on my network. Um, if I do SSH Shirker, I think, oh look, there is already a machine called Shirker and it is a, another server and not my laptop. So what I did is I changed the host name to something else. So I did a quick internet search for computers from science fiction and I changed the host name of this laptop to MCP, which is the master control program from Tron. And I thought, yeah. I like that master control program this is my main laptop i thought mcp was a nice name for this my primary laptop and to ch change the host name all i had to do was edit a couple of files uh, etc host name and etc hosts and i just changed you know that line said shirker and that one had shirker in there and i just changed those two lines and then just rebooted the computer and it's now mcp job done uh, some configuration changes I made. Uh, let's go and have a look in GNOME settings. And somewhere under here, under, um, you can search, can't you? So if I just search and do mouse, I turn off my touchpad because I'm one of these lunatics who likes the touch point 
nipple or whatever you want to call it in the middle of the keyboard. I use that um, it, all the time and I find it um, very pleasant to use. For example, uh, in TweetDeck, uh, you can, I've, I've got my finger on the nipple now and I can just hold the middle mouse button down and scroll like up and down. And also I can scroll left and right Woo, really nicely. I really like that. Um, and I find that more pleasant to use than the touchpad. So I turn the touchpad off. Uh, I also, under um, appearance, I changed it to the dark theme and I changed the icon size. The default is like 48 or something up here. And those icons just look huge on my screen. So I changed them all the way down to 32 which I find acceptable. You may like them smaller or larger, but often I find I've got more and more icons arriving here and it's getting a bit cramped. I don't like having to scroll this. The gnome shell, um, well, this dash to dock scroll behavior when you get lots of icons in here is not as pleasant as the concertina effect that Unity used to have. So I, I, I try and limit the number of icons that are in that list. And one way to do it is to shrink this down to get more in there but I don't really want to go any lower than 32. Uh, so that's really all I do in there in uh, GNOME Control Center. The bulk of the changes are over in GNOME Tweaks. And in GNOME Tweaks, uh, in the top bar, I turn on week numbers because I like having week numbers next to the weeks. As you can see them down there. Helps me with my weekly planning. So I just turn that on. Uh, what else? Oh, this is important. I focus on hover, so you'll notice as I move the mouse, I'm not clicking, but as I move the mouse, the windows become highlighted just by moving my mouse over them. It's slow in GNOME Shell to uh, do this. In other windowing systems, it's instant, like the second the mouse moves. I think it's because the whole theme is changing while you're moving from one to the other, and sometimes it doesn't keep up. Um, but still, I use Focus on Hover. I much prefer that. Um, I also turn off this uh, Attach Modal Dialogues, which I don't understand why on earth anyone would have that turned on. Um, for example, if you have a um, a window attached to the side of the screen and I go file, uh, can you do file open? Is there a file open dialog in here? No, there isn't. There? Um, well, hmm, maybe there isn't. But if I did file print, oh no. Oh, actually, yeah, you can get the machine dialog for print. Where is it? Where's the thing where you say, give me the post? Oh, can you not do that anymore in Chrome? No. Oh. Ah, there we go. Use print system dialog, that one, I think. So this dialog will be attached to this window if I turn that on. And if you just move this to see what's under it, it yoinks the whole window with it. And it, it's just infuriating that as you move this, the window behind it moves as well. I can understand the logic of having windows attached to windows, they're pairing. That kind of makes sense. But where I've seen frustration is I have a window attached to the side of the screen because that's where I want it to be. And I move a modal dialog and the window becomes detached and comes with it. And it's like, no, I didn't ask you to do that. So the great thing about GNOME is it's configurable. Uh, uh, so I configure it <laughs> and I turn that off. Uh, what's next? Um, Oh, that one as well, workspaces. Workspaces span displays. The default is workspaces on primary monitor. So if you go uh, control or up and down to switch workspaces, by default, that will only affect the the display, your, your primary display that you're looking at. And if you've got external displays, they stay static. You, you don't get an additional desktop on those, which also seems like a really weird behavior. And I've never seen that on any other windowing system. So I turn that to this, which is the expected behavior. Um, and that's that. So that's everything pretty much that I do in there. Uh, what else? Software and updates. Ah, now this is danger. Don't do this. Um, software and updates is the thing that lets you configure which repositories you have and which mirror you use and all that kind of stuff. And there's loads of other additional drivers and live patch in here. But under developer options, danger Will Robinson, I turn on focal proposed pre-release updates. So the way it works is the developers who are working on Ubuntu are building new packages or packages of new software. So for example, right now, a new version of GNOME has been or is going to be released imminently. And so these pre-release 
build of the devs are being built but because uh gnome is an interlocking set of components you can't just drip feed them into the archive one by one because one may depend heavily on a bunch of others and you've got to wait until they're all ready and so proposed is a section of the ubuntu archive where you can kind of stage things and as you're getting everything ready iterating on all the different components until they're all ready you can en masse dump them from pre-released focal into either main or universe or wherever they actually end up going so for gnome it would be in main um, and it's a bit dangerous because if you have that turned on and you update at the wrong time of day you might get like half a system update you get like half of gnome updated or because the developers are not expecting anyone to have that turned on so don't turn that on but i do turn that on because i'm i quite like you know living on the edge uh so yeah don't do that but i did that uh a few extensions um you'll notice this is way fewer extensions than i had on my previous install and if you watched yesterday's video you'll remember that i said i wanted to go back to more of a stock experience that's more of a tolerable stock experience i'm not going to you know use stock gnome because i just don't like it but i will um try and rein in the number of extensions i've got however i've got two already one is this sync thing um extension because i use sync thing as i mentioned to synchronize between machines having a little thing up here that lets me know a bit like the dropbox icon lets me know if it's working and lets me get to the web ui so that i can manage my synchronization stuff and it shows you a little icon when stuff is synchronizing it and more importantly uh, being able to select emojis that's just you know that's a requirement i can't not have that um so i i said maybe install later and i've already done it um the no annoyance one i might uh do which turns off the little pop-up box that says uh window is ready so if you launch an application you get a notification a little pop-up up here that says window is ready um I'll I'll probably install that. Screenshot tool is another nice one. Uh, this is a little icon up here where you can click it and get a uh, either a area of the screen or a window or the entire desktop, and then copy it into your clipboard. It's um or send it straight to an online hosting service. It's it's quite a nice little utility, but I haven't had a need for it yet, so I haven't installed it. I'm trying to just install stuff on demand. And the impatience one. Uh, speeds up the animation speed in gnome shell so maybe i'll install that i don't know but like i said i'm trying to reduce the number that i've got so um so that's where we are that's what i've got at the moment that's my my ubuntu focal desktop and the tweaks that i've made to it uh, i'm interested to hear if there are tweaks i missed or if you discovered anything via this video let me know in the comments down below um, I do enjoy making these and I appreciate all your feedback. I do read all the comments, even if I don't reply to all of them. It is very useful for me to see what people think and see what people say about these uh, these videos. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have some time and a spare machine, uh, maybe you could try out Ubuntu Vocal yourself before the release, which is coming up at the end of April. The earlier, the better. Um, although, as I've highlighted before, it's not ready yet. Don't run it in production. Uh, don't do as Alan does. Do as Alan says. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.